In this tutorial we're going to look at graphing population data using Microsoft Excel. This is data that we have extracted from the CIA World Factbook in a previous lesson. The first thing that we're going to do though is we're going to complete our chart. Because the CIA World Factbook didn't include density as a piece of data, we're going to have to calculate that with what we've been given. And of course we can do that using population and area. So it's a simple formula. It goes like this. We hit equals to indicate we're creating a formula. Then we can use our cursor to move over to the population field. See how it's highlighted there? We hit the slash key to indicate we want to divide. And then we move over to our area field to indicate that's what we want to divide by. So we are taking cell B3, which is the population for Canada, and dividing by cell C3, which is the area in square kilometers. We press enter, and it gives us that figure. Now, we may want to also ensure that our formatting is consistent, so we would go to right-click, Format Cells. We would go to Number, set that to 2, decimal places or three, whatever we wanted. Let's just change it to three in this case so we can see that reflected and click OK. Alright, now we could do that several times for each of the remaining cells here, but it is also possible to copy that formula down. The simplest way to do that is to grab this corner right here, click and drag straight down. When we do that, the formula is copied down. So now, for example, if we click on Poland, we can see that we're dividing cell B5 by cell C5. In other words, the population of Poland by the square kilometers of Poland. So it changes the cell references as it copies down. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this sheet so that we can distinguish it from others make it more meaningful, we're going to call it data. All I did was right click on the sheet tab and then choose rename. Now we're going to get some graphing. Let's say simplest graph we can create is the population graph. To do that we simply click and drag highlighting those cells. Now we want to highlight the names as well as the data because when we go to graph it will use that to label our data. We click on the chart wizard here up on the toolbar and a column chart works just fine for what we're doing. If we wanted something else we could choose among these other formats but column is fine. We click next so here we have our population graph. Uh, in this case, our legend is rather meaningless. It just says population, uh, and all the countries are graphed in the same color. So it's treating it as one series. We can change that by changing this to series are in rows. Now, each row is a series, so each country gets its own color, and we can see that reflected here in our legend. We click Next to move on. In this case, this is a fairly straightforward graph, so I think all we need is a title. We need to know that this is population. And we click Next. And now it says, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do it as an object in the sheet data? Well, we're going to create multiple graphs, so we're going to create each of those as its own sheet. So we go as a new sheet, and we'll call it population, and click Finish. And there we have our graph. We see that it's been put in its own sheet here. If we don't like the placement of that, if we want it to come after the data, we can just drag. You see the little triangle is indicating where we're going to drop that. And we drop it off there. So we still have our data back here and our population here. And that's how we navigate between them. Going back to our data, let's look at a graph that's a little harder to create. Let's say we want to graph density. So now we're going to highlight this by clicking and dragging. But we don't want these fields in between, so we need to find a way to highlight this without choosing those. So we hold down the control key 
and drag down. And now we see we have the cells just in that field highlighted. Again, we click on the chart wizard. Again, we column is fine. And again, we'll probably prefer that to be in rows, so each is a separate series. Click Next. Now the chart title in this case is Population Density. Okay, And the category Y axis may need some explanation here, so we're going to go Persons per square kilometer. And we wait a moment, we'll see that pop up along the side, just like that. So now we know what these figures actually mean. And we'll click Next. And again, if we make our labels too long for our data sheets, uh, sometimes that becomes problematic. So we'll shorten it a little bit. Click Finish. And once again, here's our tab. We can drag that to wherever we feel is most appropriate. This really starts to illustrate for students the difference between a country like Haiti and a country like Canada. We're going to go back to our data. This time we're going to go for something a little bit more complicated. We're going to analyze uh, growth. But to do that, we're going to, first of all, highlight our labels so we have those. Control click on these cells, and we're clicking and dragging while holding down the control key. That's births and deaths. Now I'm going to come over here to migration because that also has an effect on population growth, and I'm going to highlight that. So with births, deaths, and migration, we have all the ins and outs of population within the country. We're going to chart that now. Again, just choose a straight column chart. Go next. And two ways we can look at this. We can look at this with each country's figures side by side. Or if we change this to rows, we can look at births in all the countries side by side deaths in all the countries side by side, and migration in all the countries side by side. Either way is a legitimate way of looking at the data. In this case, we're going to stick with columns so that the country's figures are clumped together. Go Next. We're going to go for the chart title of Population Changes. We're going to go persons per 1,000 as the y-axis label. Go next. Call this pop change. We're going to put it in a new sheet once again. Click finish. And we're going to take this and drag it over here. Now we can see that there are negative population changes in countries like Haiti and Poland. That is, we have a net exodus of people in the country, so that can generate some discussion. But what we would follow this up with is probably asking the students to anticipate what the growth graph would look like, because we have growth as a field. So they can look at this data, graphically represented, compare births, and deaths, let's say in a country like Angola, and migration, and they can see which, what they anticipate would be the growth for that country. So that's a quick overview of how you could do some population graphs in Microsoft Excel.